Hey everyone, my name is Justin, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create that glitchy VHS camcorder effect in Photoshop. I did a similar tutorial to this a couple months ago, so you can check that out if you're interested in this style of photo editing. But this tutorial is going to go a little bit more in depth on how to create those actual glitches and distortions in the photo, and we're also going to add that retro looking timestamp in the corner to give it that tape player vibe. So let's go ahead and begin. Before we start, the font that I'm using is going to be called VCR OSD Mono Regular. I found this on defont.com, so I'll link that to you guys to download below, it's 100% free. So I'm going to go ahead and select that font here, and I'll use 18 pixels, you could use a size that's good for your photo. And I'll go ahead and write out a fake little timestamp. So I'll do PM, and I'll pick a random time that looks like this photo was taken at and then I'll add the month and day. Now I'll pick a year in the past just to stay true to the old school theme but you could use whatever time or date that you want. So I'll go ahead and click to confirm that and then I'll move it in the corner. So once you have it placed in the corner if it's too small or too big you can always go to edit free transform and hold shift and scale the corner up or down to get a size that you like. So go ahead and press enter and then before we start chopping up our original photo I'm going to go ahead and hit command J or you could right click and duplicate your layer so that we're working on a copy and we always have the original intact photo in case we want to go back and reference it. So now we can start distorting and chopping up this copy here. So we'll go ahead and go to filter, noise, add noise. So we're going to add a little bit of grain and noise. I'll use 6% uniform monochromatic but you can use a higher percent if you want more noise in your photo. So go ahead and press OK and the next thing we're going to do is start distorting some of the pixels. So we want to find our single row marquee tool and I say find because it's moved in the newer versions of Photoshop it seems to be in this kind of dot 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 extra tools toolbar but it's the single row marquee tool. If you don't see it here it used to be under the rectangular marquee tool menu. So go ahead and select this tool and we're gonna go ahead and just click and select a row somewhere near the top. So this just selects a one pixel row across the entire image. Now we're gonna go to command T or edit free transform and we're gonna hold shift and we're gonna scale up the photo just a little bit. So we're gonna create a small little row of stretched out pixels. So go ahead and press enter to confirm that transformation and don't deselect it just yet because here's where we're going to add some of that wave and ripple. So head over to filter, distort, shear. Shear is going to be a key tool in creating that VHS or any type of glitchy look. So it should look like this when you first open it up and I want to select repeat edge pixels for my undefined areas and then all I'm going to do is kind of add a little bit of a lean and then add a few points going left and right to create a little bit of a ripple. So I think that looks fine right there. So as you can see that creates a little bit of a ripple in our straight line and if, if we want to make it a little bit stronger we can always hit command F to repeat the last filter. So just in case you didn't know a useful tip is if you head over to the filter menu the filter that's on top will always be the last filter you did and it'll remember all the same settings. So the shortcut for that is Command F. So I'll go ahead and deselect here, so right click deselect or I could use the shortcut Command D. And I'm just going to add a few more of these little distorted pixels here. So I'll select more towards the bottom this time and I'll do the same thing, I'll transform and stretch it up, press enter to confirm my transformation and instead of going into the distort shear menu and selecting all new settings, which I could do, I could just command F and repeat the last distortion that I did a few times, um, but it's up to you, you could create different waves for each one. That's the fun of this effect is that it's got a very hand done aspect to it and it's fun to do because each time will be different. So I'm going to go ahead and create one more down here. Next thing I want to do is grab my rectangular marquee tool. So you could notice that these are a little bit jagged of edges so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new selection here and I'm not going to stretch anything out 
but I'm also going to add that sheer filter that we just did to kind of blend things in a little bit. So I'll do it right there and I'll select this border right here and I'll add that distortion and then I'll select this bottom portion here and I'll distort that. So that kind of blends in the lines a little bit. Once you're happy with your distortions, we want to adjust the hue and the saturation of our image. So I'm going to select my text layer here, so I'm at the very top of my image. And on top of this, I'm going to add a layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. So on the hue saturation menu, what we want to do is kind of shift the hue a little bit to kind of mess up the colors. So something like plus or minus 10 will be fine. And then you want to take the saturation and you want to turn it down a bit as well. So usually about negative 30 is fine. So all that does is kind of make the colors look a little bit off and desaturate the image a little bit. Once you're happy with your hue saturation layer, we're going to add a few final touches to really sell the effect. So I'm going to create a new layer here. So layer, new layer. And on this blank layer, I'm going to go to image, apply image. So all this does is takes everything that we've done so far and puts it on one layer. And you could guess that we're going to go ahead and chop this up a little bit more. So to add a little bit of color distortion, we're going to go to the channels menu. And I want you to select just one of these color channels. So let's select the red color channel. And we're going to add a sheer distortion on that as well. So head over to filter distort shear, except this time we don't want it to be very distorted when we're working with this channel. We actually just want to shift it one or two pixels around. We'll go ahead and select OK and it's going to shift the color channels just enough so that when you make the red, green, and blue visible again, you get that red and blue color splitting that adds to the distortion. So now that we've split the color channels just a tiny bit to get that red and blue distortion, I'm going to add a few finishing touches. Now you want to make sure you're working on red, green, blue mode again. So click on your layer and make sure you're back on red, green, blue mode because we're going to add a few finishing details. So head back to your single row marquee tool wherever you found it and make sure you're working on add to selection mode. So we're going to go ahead and add a few random selections uh, in one section of the photo and maybe a couple up here. Now we're going to head to our rectangular marquee tool and make sure we're working in subtract from selection mode and I'm going to chop up some of those lines that I just made. So I'm going to cut the edges off that and I'm going to kind of just make it so that they don't go all the way across the image. So once I've got some random jagged lines here, this is going to add some distortion by going to filter, stylize, wind. So in the wind setting, we want to choose the blast method and we're going to choose from the right. This is kind of going to stretch only those one row of pixels a little bit to kind of create some more noise and distortion. So go ahead and select OK and you can't see anything that happened because the marching ants of the selection are still covering up the effect. But go ahead and hit Command F or go to your filter menu and repeat it one more time. So you did it twice and now we'll hit Command D or right click and deselect. And you can see this adds those lines of distortion throughout. Uh, it kind of gives it more of that messed up look. One final touch is we're going to add a shear over the entire image now. So go to Filter, Distort, Shear. And this is going to ripple the entire image. So our text that hasn't really been touched up until this point will get a little bit rippled. Um, so I'm just going to add a small amount of shear, maybe towards the bottom really don't want to do anything major at this point. So as you can see, this effect is going to look pretty different every time you do it. Here's some other time and you could take all of the techniques that I found while, while I was playing around with how to hand distort the image and you could take the ones you want or tweak the ones you don't like. Hopefully this gave you an idea of how to create that camcorder effect and you can play around with it on your own. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and if you're not subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe for weekly Photoshop tutorials. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.